Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs. This is part four of the Prototype Z Sagat resin kit that I'm putting together step by step videos. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how I patch up the seams with Aves. Now, Aves you can pretty much pick up in big tubes. Uh, you can get them in different colors. Uh, I have Aves in white. Uh, I have the Fix It Sculpt and I have red. Now the reason why I'm using red here is just to give you guys an idea of how I put fix up the seams so you can actually see what I'm doing rather than just putting white and you'd be hard to see in the video. Uh, I don't always use red for this type of stuff, I use red for other type stuff. But it's all, if you like colors and you want to use colors, that's fine. But just to give you an idea, when you use stuff with colors and you wish it in your hands, it kind of stains. So if you're using a color aves on an already painted statue, you got to be careful with the residue on your fingers, like I said in the past, and it could get on the statue. And for Aves, I use safety solvent. So I buy the bigger tubes of the safety solvent. And basically, Aves only works with safety solvent. Um, you can use spit. Uh, some people use Vaseline, I guess. Uh, using water, though, water will break up the uh, Aves. It'll absorb it, and it'll crack, and it'll never harden correctly, so you don't want to stay away from water. But if you had a little bit and you really wanted to do it, you could just spit into a cup and use a brush and brush it on or tools. Now, I. Uh, I sculpt with these kinds of brushes here. I get these at uh, Jerry's Outlet Store in uh, Essex Springs, New Jersey, up in West Orange. Uh, they always have back to school sales, and they wind up being like a dollar fifty to a dollar eighty pop. And I buy these by the buttloads because this is what I use to sculpt. I don't use tools as much, you know, for sculpting. For some odd reason, I just use brushes. It works better for me, and it's just each their own. So, with that being said, you just. Uh, you know, when you get your uh, seam lines, you just take uh, some A's and you roll up in your finger. Now, you can use the safety solvent and soften up even more if you need to make it like a more of almost like kind of like a putty. Now, you don't have to use A's to fill the seam lines. There's other types of stuff out there. Um, there's other kinds of putties. Um, if, if it's a really thin uh, line stuff, I, you can actually use Tamaya putty stuff that I have. Uh, Tamaya makes other kinds of putties too. Um, some people use Bondo. You can get it at an auto parts store. Um, so there's many different types of stuff you can use. It all depends on what you want. But I'm going to stick to A's because it's just what I like to do. So whenever uh, I'm going to do a seam line like this, let's see if we can get in closer for you. So basically, you can put it in there now. There's a couple ways of doing this. If you need to push it in, and you have some kind of a tool, you can actually sit there and push it in. But what I like to do is I like to dip my brushes in. And just kind of use it to get in there in the cracks. Now as you can see, using the safety solvent and you can start to see how it stains around there so like if you're using white that stain stuff is still going over there and it just 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 gives you an idea of the way I work and how messy it can be but if you get a little too much you can dip the solvent in and you can kinda wipe it around now because I primed my piece and I'm working on a duplicolor primer the safety solvent kinda picks up the primer a little bit but not to the point where it's gonna ruin it but I'm going to be sanding it anyway. So basically I just go around filling up all the seam line gaps. Now because there's kind of really gappy down there I'm going to have to keep putting more A's because I'm actually pushing it in under the crack. So. And this will all be primed up again and sanded down because I've been using it, handling it, working with it, so on and so forth.
And if you wanted to, you can just uh, take the paper towel, you can wipe it off. Now I suggest you use the paper towel to wipe it off like that, which is fine, but if you're actually sculpting it, you don't want to, you want to kind of just run with it. So basically by pushing that Aves in there, it's actually pushing a lot. So I got to keep going with this because it's a deeper, uh, deeper crevices in there. You can kind of see. But what we'll do is we'll show the leg now. So the leg over in certain areas, like in the back and the side here, have some. So what you can do is if you want to get finer and you have an exacto blade, just be careful you don't cut yourself. You can take it. push it in you can just kind of run it along the seam line like a you know, like the regular spackle knife but you're just doing it smaller you know and if, and if you if you put a lot on that's fine because if you if you have a bigger brush you can kind of along with it. You can even use your finger. You know, don't be afraid. You don't want to fill up the detail stuff on like the the foot here with all the fabrics. That stuff you don't want to fill up with the apes. That you want to be careful not to fill in all those gaps. But working on a smooth part like a muscle, that's fine because you can prime this and then you can get your sandpaper and sand it down a little bit and you'll be fine. It's not like you're ruining the um, detail of the sculpt. I mean, yeah, if you filled up this whole part here with the muscle, then, yeah, you're, you're ruining the sculpt. But if you're getting away with just the big smooth part of the muscle here, you're doing okay. You know? Because so, what I'm saying is you don't take a huge chunk and go like that right there and then start smooshing it in. You want to go thinner and take it away. So you use your... Just get in there. And basically, as you can see, it's a little, it's, it looks a little messy. I mean, but it's still smoothed out a little bit, you know. And once you go to prime it the next day and sand it down, it all flushes together. Now I use the Duplicolor Filler Primer, and it'll fill in any little stuff. And then, uh, so basically, as I was looking at it, I think there was a spot here underneath his foot. There's a little bubble here. Let's see if we can get a little closer a little bubble underneath his foot right here. So basically, while you have the A's out, you can take it. You can fill in that little area. So you can see the little bubble piece there. You know, so if you see any other little areas here and there, you can do that as well. But, so basically what I'll just keep doing is, I'm just going to keep doing it and uh, we'll just go a little fast video and filling it all in.
Okay guys, at this point, I, I did the whole seam line along here, but like I said in the past videos, there was a crack here. So this is actually kind of common with kits. Sometimes you get kits where there's a crack, a chip, a broken spot, and part of the hobby is you gotta kinda use your skills to kinda repair it. You're never gonna actually get something that's always perfect. And even uh, all your pre-painted statues you buy at stores, comic book stores, order online from companies, Everything I'm doing here in my videos is the same exact thing. They do the, they go, they cast them, they start piecing them together, and sometimes there's cracks and errors that they have to fill up within the production part. So it's never perfect. Now I've stripped down statues in the past all the time where, you know, you have issues. So basically, what you do is you take some A's and you kind of try to get the sculpt where. You know, you just gotta use some of your sculpting abilities, you know, if you got tools, and you could kind of wing it. You know, if you have a tool or something where, you know, that's kind of close, you can kind of just hit it. So basically you kind of re-sculpt the little area there, you know, because it was chipped. And once this all sits and dries, you're pretty much good to go. So, let's finish up the legs and then we'll go from there. So that pretty much finishes up this section of this video of filling in gaps. Uh, as you can see, it gives you an idea of how you know much gaps to fill up. It took well, you know almost a half hour to an hour because it is a little bit tedious, but you want to make sure you get it all filled in. You know. Uh, also, you can see I had to re-sculpt the belt a little bit, but once that's dried down, I'll sand it a little bit, smooth it out, and you know, did each uh, each foot too. So all those gaps are all filled in, so he's pretty much one statue. And uh, so the next video, basically, we'll be back with, uh, when I get my magnets, we'll just start working on the magnets. Uh, we'll get the legs on and uh, try to get everything worked out in that video. And then from there, we'll get to painting. So uh, we'll see you next time.